Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed part one. If you're tuning in for the first time and want to know how to create an entry from the very first steps, you may wish to check that out here. Here in part two, we're going to talk about the two sections where most of the actual writing takes place, the overview and the backstory. A quick note before we get started. It's best to compose these sections using a word processor so that you can organize your research and edit your work. They might seem similar at first, but there are actually some important differences between the two sections. The overview is the first thing a user will read, and this should offer a thoughtful, one-paragraph introduction that includes the most essential information. The backstory is a place where you can provide more details, and although there is no limit to how much detail you can provide, we've heard from users that four to six paragraphs is usually the ideal length. Don't worry, though. You can include links to primary and secondary sources at the end of the entry so readers can learn even more. Let's start with the overview. The overview is the very first thing a reader will see when they encounter your entry. As visitors click on each pin, the site's name and a piece of the overview pops up, so your first two sentences matter a great deal. Think about how to offer the most detail possible. Here's the good news. Your reader will already know the location and they will have already read the title of the entry. This allows you to start with a more compelling sentence than basic online encyclopedias or travel guides. For example, here is an entry with the title Harrisburg Museum that is pinned in downtown Harrisburg. Starting an entry with the sentence above might make sense for a print source or basic online encyclopedia, but anyone using Clio would already know that information. So you can start your entry with something more descriptive and unique. Your first sentence sets the tone for the whole entry, so think of a way to offer interesting, objective, and essential information right from the start. Your entry might begin with something like this. Note how this author doesn't wait to give you some of the most important facts about the site. Below the main page map is a list of the 20 Clio sites closest to the visitor's current location. What's this right here? Part of your overview. Your overview also shows up here at the top of your entry. Before a visitor sees any pictures, maps, or anything else, they'll read your overview. Now that we've seen some context for where your overview will end up, let's talk about how to write one. Our number one tip here at Clio for writing overviews is write your backstory first. Because in our experience, as you set out to write the backstory, you tend to find out all kinds of amazing things you didn't know, things that might be a great hook for your overview. While the overview should get the reader up to speed about a site's overall historical significance, the backstory is the meat of the entry. This is where you get to tell as much of the historical narrative as you want. But keep in mind that most readers prefer about four to six paragraphs. Start by placing yourself in the shoes of someone using Clio to explore nearby historical sites, or imagine that you are reading the entry because a friend shared a link on social media. Start with the beginning and offer an objective and compelling summary that anticipates any questions your reader might have. Blend the attention to detail of the historian with the kind of writing that reaches a popular audience by offering details that address fundamental questions such as who, what, when, where, why, how, and why does this place matter? While history is more than names and dates, it's essential to include this information early and often to help your reader develop context. And while you don't need to repeat the address of your location, be sure to explain why a monument, marker, or structure is located here. If you are creating an entry for a historical event, be sure to connect that history to the place where you pinned the entry. Something magic happens when our sense of place connects with our sense of the past. History is a relationship between those seven things. What kind of place is it? Who built it and why? The when, where, and how probably have a lot to do with these who's and why's. If this is one of your first entries, try reading it to a friend who is unfamiliar with your topic. Having a fresh audience can let you know whether your telling of the historical events is ready to be understood by visitors who are new to it as well. Clio gets a little better each day as more people share what they know with others. And because Clio authors combine primary and secondary sources, we hope that each entry offers something uniquely valuable to the author as well as the reader. That brings us to an important point. 
please do not copy information from other sources directly into Clio. There are plenty of sites that aggregate content and this can lead to misinformation being shared rather than being challenged and corrected. We ask that each entry be based on multiple sources with the author conducting research, evaluating the information they find, and creating a concise entry that synthesizes the best information from multiple sources. We would rather have fewer entries than include entries that are simply copied from other sources. Every entry should offer something original and uniquely useful. A crucial part of this storytelling is formatting. It's best to write with complete paragraphs, separated by a single line and without indentation. Also, please only include a single space between sentences. This allows our authors to include the most information in the shortest amount of space, while also offering a pleasant and professional format for the reader. It's also important to create a paragraph outline for the backstory so that your entry is well organized. Most of our authors find that a chronological approach works best, but you can also include a few thematic paragraphs into your outline. For example, an entry for a historical marker for a battle might begin with three paragraphs about the battle itself. The first would offer background information leading up to the battle, while the second and third would detail the battle and its significance within the larger war. The fourth paragraph might discuss some details about key participants or discuss the way the battle has been interpreted over time. The final paragraphs might include something about the effort to create the historical marker or monument itself. This is just one example, and we are working to create a repository of resources on our site, including examples of possible outlines and ways to improve an entry. There are lots of other great formatting tools here in Clio, but most of them concern citations and sources, so we'll save those for the next video. Now that you know so much about your historical site, let's go back up to that overview. Writing your backstory has flexed your writing and research muscles, so now it should be easy to sum it all up. Your overview should include quick answers to questions like what and when, and you can also offer quick mentions of some of the most significant aspects of a museum. The most interesting facts about an event commemorated by a marker, the architectural significance of a building, and the historical significance of a person or event being commemorated by a monument. It's also important to include something about the things a visitor might see if your entry is a museum or cultural site. Think of the overview as the description you would give if you only had five sentences or 60 seconds to describe your site. You can create the overview and backstory sections offline and paste them into Clio when you're ready. These two sections are the most demanding, so congratulations! After you've finished this, the next sections are a breeze. Please stay tuned in Part 3 for how Clio makes citing your sources easy.